one chod, one rod. Let's get it on! The Bait Tech team are back at it again. We've got loads to show you, more advice, tactics, new products, guest anglers. Plus, they've let us loose with our very own in-session cameras. Every new bit of bait that Bait Tech's doing, there's a lot of passion that's gone in there for it. What I love is they listen to the guys that are fishing for it. One of the biggest edges you can have in carp fishing is most definitely pre-baiting. Now it takes time, it takes effort, but it definitely reaps your rewards. I start off with the Halibut Select pellets. The reason why I use these pellets is because there's so many different sizes in there, which means so many different breakdown times. The small fish, they will literally just pick up all these different sizes of pellets, and as they break down, they will just literally clean the spot for you. So that is how I start it off. Pellets straight on the spot. Second phase will then be to use the pellets again, but with oil added on them. Now the reasons being that I use oil over them is obviously that's going to prolong the breakdown time. What I use is the tuna oil, pour them over all the pellets, get them nicely glazed. I mean, I want them absolutely soaking. Those will then in a few days time go out on the spot as well. So first process, normal pellet. Second process, oiled pellet. We're going to leave these in this tank here, the normal pellets, come back in an hour or so and see how much they've broken down compared to the oil pellets. Next stage of my pre-baying is a shake. Now, this isn't your normal type of milkshake that you normally drink. It'll be one for the big carp that are out there. Now, I start off the shake with a whole bottle of the GLM liquid. Now, a lot of people sort of moan that you know, these things can be expensive, but we spend thousands of pounds on rods, reels, tackle, you name it. This is the most important part, bait. Then I'll use the lake water as well to mix in with the GLM. Now start thickening the shake up. So what I'm gonna be using is some of the awesome entice, which has got liver powders in it, loads of aminos, and it matches up brilliantly with the boilies that I'm gonna be using. It's starting to smell carpy already. Now you could just use it just like that. That would be absolutely fine. Now I'm gonna use the juice from the sweet corn to spice up my shake. In goes all them lovely juices. I'm gonna make this active. So in goes the crushed hemp. Shake that up. To finish it off, I'm gonna be using rock salt. It just brings out them flavors a little bit more. Not only that, later on in the stage, I'm gonna be putting this shake over the top of my boilie. And what that will do is it will rehydrate the baits. Now, if you air dry boilies, say you're going out to France, you air dry boilies, not a lot of people like doing it because you lose all of the life out of the boilie. The boilie doesn't smell the same anymore. Using one of these shakes totally rehydrates that bait and it brings it back to life. You let them rock salt break down in there for a little while, give it about 10 minutes. So we've had a few days pre-baiting. I'm now gonna pour that, all that loveliness, over the top of the pellets, not all of it, just enough, and then that will go out on the spot. It'll break down into nothing. All the small fish, all them nuisance fish have basically cleaned your spot off for you. It's made it glow and it's ready for big fish to come in. This is where your boilie comes into it. For your fresh baits that you've got at home, your frozen baits, pour it over the frozen baits and then just refreeze it. And it then basically gives them that added boost of the process that you've done over the pre-baiting session. You're now using a bait that has started from day one. These have been air drying for a few days. I'm going to now pour my shake over the top of the baits. Give them a lovely shake totally rehydrated the bait. 
you can see they look absolutely awesome in there. They now smell rehydrated and back to life again. An awesome little edge for you. Right, so it's now been two hours since we last put the normal pellets in and the oil pellets in. So we've got the normal pellets and as you can see, they've broken down quite quickly and we've still got the oil pellets in here, which haven't broken down so quick. Obviously the larger ones are still intact, but they're breaking down quite rapidly. Whereas the larger ones over here are still quite solid at least eight hours and they'll be completely gone. Whereas with these, 24, maybe 48 hours until they've gone, hopefully that helps you out. I've had a really good season actually, caught two UK 40s, spotting out a big bucket of hemp, corn, boilies, just sort of the winning tactic. Spotting is a really great way of getting smaller food items out into the middle of the lake. If something's out of catapult range or baiting scoop range and you're not allowed bait boats, spotting is really the only way to do this. There's so many bait options on the market these days that people get a bit confused of what needs to go into a spod mix. I'm going to show you my really simple spod mix that consists of just three ingredients. Pretty much the base for every spod mix is hemp. I'm using the chilli hemp here. It's full of attractors and liquids because everything's cooked in the bag keeping it really fresh. Next, good old faithful sweet corn. I'm using the Scopex version which is a really good fish attractor. And final ingredient, I've got a mix of bait tech boilers here, both whole and crushed, giving loads of different size options. Give them all a good mix up. Once that's all mixed, that is pretty much your spod mix done. These three ingredients in here are enough to catch your fish. Just because it's simple doesn't mean it's not effective. Just to add to the attraction, I'm going to put a little bit of tuna oil in there. This makes the hemp really oily. When the fish start feeding on it, they send up big oil slicks, so you know you've got carp in your area. If you can see now, the mix is quite wet. This is fine if you're using a spawn, because all the particles are going to stay inside. Whereas if you're using a conventional spod, where it's quite wet, a lot of it may fall out the back on the car, so you might want to add a bit of ground bait just to stodge your mix up a little bit. As for your hook baits, just having these three ingredients in there gives you loads of different options. You can use a matching boilie, a boilie tip with corn, a pop-up, sweet corn itself. What I'm using is the new corn pop-ups from Bait Tech. These are actually small pop-ups and not plastic. So on some lakes where imitation corn is banned, you're allowed to use these. Two of these on a simple pop-up rig, which will sit perfectly over my spot mix. Day, the mirror, about five or six pounds. Pristine little common, caught of my simple but effective spot mix. About ten pounds, so they're getting bigger. So a few fish bubbling out in open water. So I put on one of my solid bags with special G pellets and ground bait. Cast it out, a few minutes later, rattled off this pretty little fella. Didn't have anything on the margin rod, so I've moved that into open water, because that's where all the runs were coming from. Uh, had been out about five minutes and it ripped off. Carp fishing to me is just everything. I just haven't found another hobby that even comes close to it. I've heard you got a little bit of an edge, mate. Just a little bit. It's been doing well this year anyway. We've been lucky enough to get our hands on these new boilies from Bait Tech. Nice. As you know, they seem to be a winner at the moment. Just get an empty bucket, just tip a few boilies in there. I'd normally do this obviously the night before, just for everything to soak up for like the, you know the best results. Yeah, yeah. What I do first is just glaze the boilies just in this chili oil. Yeah. What I'm basically trying to do and achieve out of this is incorporate a ground bait, but in a different way, you know, than a stick mix or a method feeder, balling it out and stuff. So I'm trying to do something a little different. Right. I'm also trying to give the freebies that I'm feeding a bit of an active bit of an edge. Bit of, yeah, but it is an yeah, edge. Yeah. But instead of just boilies sitting on the bottom doing anything, yeah. I'm trying to make them a little bit active, you know, just try and entice them to come down and feed. Put the lid on. Loads of noise. Loads of noise. Obviously That's I'd like why to do, you do it at home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and as you can see, 
Nice. They've all took on that glaze now yeah. with the oil effect. So now they're sticky as such. These are a little bit sticky. Yeah. If there's a bit of a chop on the water and the fish start feeding on your spot, that will cause a little slick, and you know, see slick it. in it. You'll see it out Exactly. There, uh, and normally, they... if it was just a standard boilie sitting on the bottom, yeah. you wouldn't know. You, no. you, you'd just hear the alarm single turn yeah. off and that's <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. To give it the actual sticky effect, I add some of the sweet coconut liquid. Now, I'm not too fussed about the smell of this as such, yeah. you know, because I'm going for that real fishy, real pungent smell. This is purely used like a syrup to yeah, stick yeah. everything together, bind it together. And there's something in that as well that just absolutely pulls them down. The amount of times I've put it on baits and I've had bites instantly just because of that sweet coconut. Again, give it another mix. So now you can see. Milky. Milky. Nice. A little bit sticky. Yeah. They look awesome just like that. Next thing is to add this crush temp. It's nice and light, there's tiny little bits, and they just float up and down in yeah, the water yeah. there. So again, just causing a bit, a bit, more bit of, of activity. Yeah. yeah. So I just give them a little dusting. I then add the salmon fry crumb. Just another additive that I've done really well on. Yeah. I've used it in stick mixes and stuff yeah, like that. Awesome. And, I've and it's just... oily as well, isn't it? So yeah. that obviously partners up really well with the chili. It's looking good. This is the key ingredient, the krill and tuna ground bait. Yeah. You've only got to open a packet, stick your nose in and have a whiff to tell yeah. that it's a quality yeah. bait. you just got to smell it, mate. Yeah. I, can <laughs> smell it when were, I can smell it when it was sat down there as well. It is absolutely gorgeous. So I'll just dust these off. I'm just going to give them a last shake. And as you can see, these aren't right yet. It's still too wet. So we just keep adding. And I don't touch any of the other products now. That's enough for them. So this is where the krill and tuna comes into play. That keep it going, just yeah. drying it off, and until um, you get to the perfect bit. Now they are now perfect. Everything's dry, yeah. and then boilies have just took on that couple of different products. You can use these straight out of the bucket, but like I say, I tend to do them the night before so they harden up a bit. Yeah, so almost crystallise around you, the bait. That's and such. right. It will slow down the breakdown time. Yeah, but. When I'm using a catapult, they're not falling apart in the air. So you know. they're going to the bottom and then they're doing their job. Exactly. If you put a few of them in, into your tank. They're your normal boilies, and these are Craig's Edge. So straight into the tanks. Now I know straight away which one I'm going to choose <laughs> out of the two. They look absolutely awesome. I mean, obviously, it's going to be different in the water itself, but you can see the little bits popping off. Yeah. You can see the ha little halo effect starting now. Basically, the boilie will then end up like these, but it'll have that nice little bit of scent of the tuna and krill, the salmon fry crumb. Yeah, the chilli oil yeah. and the sweet coconut, all there pulling them down to them gorgeous looking hook baits. Effort equals reward, and this is obvious. It's going to catch your carp. Right, well, I'm off to go and get more rods out. Be lucky, mate. Cheers. Wait till he's gone. But the real edge with this bait, what I've found, is when these baits are laying on the bottom and there's fish activity in the swim, and they come in over the top of the bait and there's feeding activity going on, the cloud that it causes is just, you know, it's amazing. They just get lost in it. All the fine particles of ground bait, the krill and tuna, the salmon fry crumb, the crushed hemp, it just causes a fatal attraction. Since the first DVD, obviously I've been a little bit more confident in front of camera, etc. Doing also a lot of filming on my diary pieces. Instead of just telling someone about the story with the videos, you can actually show them. Someone else can benefit off something that I've told them. A video is the easiest way of doing that. It's great. Paka! First one of the night. The rod's been out probably, what, an hour? Middle rod on the stiff hinge, the little pink fluoro pop-up. Over seven, eight catapults with boilies. But puck a little common. Just under 17 pound. Can't grumble for a few hours after work. Rod's been out at about 20 minutes, if that. And a 23 pound common on the bank. Absolutely screamed off. Debating whether to stay on as we've got work at six o'clock in the mornings. Oh, I'll puck a little wake up call. Half six this morning, Rod screams off. Little 16 pound common. And another little scaly, probably about 18 pounds. Took me all over the show, proper good fight. Get up there, baby, hoist the way. You wanna get down that gym, Mortimer? 36 pounds, happy days. It's now, what, 10 o'clock? This rod just pulled up tight, 26 pound one common. Little bit of scattering over the bait tech boilie on the stiff hinge ring again with a little pink fluoro pop up. 
Here we are, France, second night. Craig's got one on the bank, first fish of the week. 35 pounds, stunning mirror carp. See a few fish shown on the far reed line margin, about 110 yards, fairly hard water. Yeah, it's been fishing moody last week. I went in softly, softly, 50, 60 baits like I would do at home over a little white fluoro pop-up, so happy days. He's banked another this morning, first light, 41.12. Introduced another 60, 70 baits over the top of it after I took a bite, and I went off this morning. Again on the choddy, slack lines, really clear water, just keeping everything pinned down. A 36 pound, two ounce common. Rod ripped off this morning at half past six. Came to another 60, 70 bait at a new bait tech boily. Again, the little white pop up on the choddy rig, 110 yards, lovely. See a couple of shows this morning, put a rod on it, 15 baits, of the bait tech boily again and this 41 pound five ounce mirror. Pucker fish, beat me up a bit, but well happy with this one. But we'll keep you posted. We've got a guest angler on the bank today. His name's Joe Turnbull, he's a really good friend of mine. He writes for Cart World, he knows a thing or two about bait. How you doing? I'm all right, mate, yeah, not too bad. Just having a look at this, uh, this new hemp for uh, bait tech. Have yeah. you used it before? Oh, love it. You've seen your fair share of hemp. There's a lot of stuff out at the moment, you know what mm. I mean? Bits and pieces. But this, uh, honestly, it's one of, the, one of the best product, if not the best hemp on the market at the moment. Mm. It's cooked in the bag, it's fresh, free from preservatives. It's just bang on. I mean, the seeds are massive inside. It's what you want. Yeah, I mean, if I was a carp, I'd definitely eat that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, tell me about it. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. just fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it reminds me of little snails, but I think it's a bit of a misconception, personally. I think... Only because they're so big? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stuff inside, the actual um, pulse, if you like, inside. Mm. I think that's what they really go for, because that's what contains all the nutrients when you mm. think about it. Mm. You know, the stuff that they really get out of. Yeah. I mean, it's like if you see sweet corn, it's one of the best baits around. We used to use that as kids, didn't we? Do you know what I mean? Out that's of the fun. float when we first started fishing. Yeah. It was the one bait that you'd use, do you know what I mean? But I think it's, again, if you watch fish take these in, especially mm. carp, they'll digest that, but they'll actually pass through the skin. Yes, and that's, that, yeah, right. So I think they've that, taken yeah. out the actual kernel, you know what I mean, the nutrient inside right. of it. That's the key to that sweet corn. Inside that is, is packed with aminos. It's almost a superfood. Fantastic stuff. Love yeah. it. What yeah. else have we got here? That's got a load of stuff in there, isn't it? I don't think there is another particle out there at the moment, no. really, that, that comes anywhere near this quality. And with it being like cooked in the, in the tin, it's, oh. as, it's probably as good as boiling it up yourself. Yeah, definitely. On the bank. Yeah. There are a few little tips that you could probably do with it as well. You could actually reheat that if you wanted to, just to That's sort of, idea, you know, yeah, just to get the oils back out of yeah, it again yeah, yeah. and just get it, you know, working more for you. Yeah, Can't wait it. to use it. Yeah, I know. What are you doing with this method mix? I've been using that as a stick mix because it's got quite a lot of big particles in it. Mm. But I've been incorporating a couple of other bits in, in with it as well. It's the salmon fry. Nice. They do the crushed emp, which is like really, really nice. Yeah. Rather than um, having it sitting on the bottom of the log, you want it breaking down. Yeah, you want it to explode. You want bits yeah. coming off. And... Um, but you want to try and prolong that for as long as you can. Because it says method mix on the bag, doesn't mm. mean you've got to use it as method no, mix. No, 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 of course. Because these are separate ingredients, yeah. don't mean you can't mix them together. Yeah. So, empty bucket, to the method mix. You don't need to go mad with it. And then the crushed imp is the, is the one that's going to make it explode. If you try and put that in the water on its own, it'll just float. Yeah. So add a bit of that, and then a little bit of salmon crumb. It's really nutritious. They love this stuff. And because it's so fine, it, it gets them grubbing about for ages and ages yeah, and ages. Yeah. Thing is, once you've got them three ingredients in there, and you mix those up, if you haven't got enough, add again the same amount again, if you know what I mean. You, and the other thing I've been using is the uh, CSL. Chilli flavour. Goes with the chilli oil. Lovely. So that makes sense. So I always shake them Give it for as shake. long as you possibly can. Because right. all the best stuff is all at the bottom. A bit of that, and also a bit of the chilli oil. And just shake it until you see it go sort of lumpy. And then you want to get your stick from your PVA. Ideally, you want to get all the lumps out of it as well. Mm. So you make it up quite dry, don't you? Yeah. I'll show you one that I did last night, mm. because I always make my stick mixes before I come. If you leave it over 24 hours... It just absorbs all the... Yeah, when you come back to it, because a lot of the, um, the, the method mix is full of, like, you know, dry, coarse ingredients, mm. it soaks on all the liquids yeah. and takes them all on. And in true Blue Peter fashion, we've got one locked up here. And, yeah. and as you can see, if I, if I hold it in my hands and put it together, it won't actually stay together. When you take it out of your hands, you actually fill all the oil in your, on your fingers. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. see it, can't yeah. you? Yeah. That mean? That's because that's taking it all on. But the thing is now, you can just knock that stick mix up and it'll in that bag and it's perfect. That'll break down perfectly. Mm. Let's have yeah. a look. Have a look. 
<coughs> so what I've been doing recently mm. is I've been pulling the hair through the bag before I attach the baits. Right. This way, when the PVA melts, it doesn't um, get caught up with it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's still it's sort of still fine for the cast as well, so it don't tangle up either. So yeah, because a lot of times you get like a blob. On, yeah. On that that's what I'm thing. trying to avoid. Pull them through. Yeah. Put a little bait stop in as usual. Pull those in and then just pull it up so it's all sitting nice and pretty. Lovely. You know? Yeah. So what we do is we add the oil to the mix yep. to prolong the process. I don't want it to break down straight away. Yeah? I want it to last a bit longer than it should do, usually. Yeah. And see now, the hair is completely broken away yeah, from the PVA. Yeah, it's totally free, isn't it? You see what I mean? Yeah. Whereas before, when That's people... That's still attached, yeah, normally. Normally, it's still attached. Mm. And people pull them through the sticks, don't they? Mm. So you end up with a boily on the blob, and it's just not, you know, not very good. Look at the oil coming off. Yes, yeah, just with a mad slick of it. You can see all the little bits going up and down. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that'll go on for a good couple of hours at least. So what's that going at? Is that the crushed hemp? Yeah, that's the crushed hemp. It's the oil that's mixed in with it that we said that prolongs that. the whole, whole process. You can right. see that the bait and the hook now is actually buried. Right. Perfect, isn't it? All we need now is a carp. Yeah. The carp goes over the top of it and gives it a bit of a waft. Wow, oh, look just at that. kicks it all up. <laughs> that's just awesome, isn't it? I'm Rob Nunn, I'm an angling consultant. I write magazine features. I also work for a company called Angling Spirit that organises and runs the World Carp Classic. Currently hold a world title from last year for the team event. I'm also now working with Bait Tech, helping with product development and testing the product. Just need an empty bucket, starting with the super seed hemp. It's got to be treated as fresh once it's opened. And due to the cooking process, all the oils and all the goodness from them has been cooked in the tin, so you've got everything. The oil that's sitting on the top there is amazing. Very large hemp seeds, and you can always tell when they're properly cooked is when they burst in your fingers and the white centre pops out. Tip that into the bucket. The next thing I'll add is the chilli hemp. Over the last few years, it's been proven that chilli is really attractive to carp. They like it a bit hot. It's also got nice red flecks in it, makes it quite visible on the bottom. And then the super seed particle mix, all sorts of goodies that the carp like. All the natural oils and goodness are still in there. And that goo that they're actually in is what you lose with a lot of particles that you buy off the shelf in the shop. That's where all the attractiveness is. Put that in there. Mash that up a bit. I normally just use the tin. We've got the Special G pellets. I like adding pellets to a spod mix because they soak up all those juices within the particles. Also, they've obviously got their own attraction levels. These are based on betaine and spirulina. I'm using the quite small ones here because I think it keeps the carp grubbing longer on the bottom. And pellets also um, have the ability, they sort of stain the bottom of the lake with the smell. And carp will dig for a long time after the bait is gone. So another great addition to a spod mix. I'd normally put about half a bag to this mix. And lastly, but most importantly in my opinion, is the Super CSL. This is a product I've got with me every time I leave the house to go fishing. You cannot overdose this, it's completely natural. So I'd normally use a good half a bottle. And when it hits the bottom, it creates a lovely cloud effect that gradually spreads across the bottom and will draw fish from quite a long way away. And that will uh, soak up into all the bait. And that is my spod mix. These are the Poloni boilies, which are brand new. Consistency is nice, there's still a high moisture content in there. A really nice, strong smell, a smooth round flavour on that. You can crumb that down and put it into a stick mix in the PVA, or just uh, fire them out as they are. It's set to be a winner. I'm gonna show you the rig. It's a strange thing you may say. It's a hairy lead. They're supposed to look like an old piece of weed on the bottom, so not to spook the carp. The rig itself is a soft hook link fished on a lead clip. Today I'm fishing over silt, which is black. So I've got a nice heavy black sinking hook link on, soft braid so it follows the contours of the bottom. The hook I'm using, is an aggressively curved shank hook, and I use the silicon right to the point. That creates a great turn, so the hook point sits in the bottom lip of the carp's mouth. I'm now gonna bait the rig. Thread it on the hair, if I can ever get it in there. Slide it up. 
These are new micro pop-ups from Vape Tech. High vis need sunglasses for them one, because I've been using a little white one today. They're ultra buoyant, and they last a long time in the water. The white pop-up is now on the top of the bait. When it sits in the water, because of the buoyancy of that, the hook will lay down flat, as will the bait, and then you'll have the white tip on the top. And what I do with this is dip it right in, and it will soak up all the juices that have been trapped with the particles during the cooking process, even grabbing them. Now, if you cast that out, not only next to your hook bait, if you've got the smell of the bait, then you've got all that leaching out into the water as added as attraction. And even hours later, that will still be dispersing oil into the water. The bait was presented last night and it tore off early this morning. This is the first fish to the new uh, Bait Tech Poloni oily range. The fish certainly liked it, so I'm happy with it. It's quite lively. It's a nice looking ghosty, probably about 18 pounds. Uh, he's been troughing well on it. I can see from inside the sling that it's uh, expelled a lot of the <laughs> digested bait. Not a bad start. Let's get him back. It's uh, nice and healthy, hasn't been retained too long. Obviously the fish welfare is paramount. And off he goes. Rig choice is really important when using solid PVA bags. You want a short braided hook link. Because everything's being put inside the solid PVA bag, anything too long or stiff would result in getting it tangled up. For the hook bait, I'm gonna use a small white high vis pop-up in sweet coconut flavor. The white really stands out against the rest of the other food items and on the bottom of the lake. When the solid PVA bag dissolves, the pop-up's gonna to rise to the top and pretty much sit there like a cherry on a cake. To make a solid PVA bag, first of all, you need to construct the bait mix that goes inside. I'm gonna use the Special G range. I'm gonna start off with a mix of two different size pellets, half a bag of two mil. Follow that with half a bag of the four mil. Having two different sized pellets gives two different breakdown times. Once you've got the pellets in, I'm gonna use a matching Special G green ground bait, full of attractors for fish, including GPS 90, which is a super soluble fish meal, which a carp absolutely adore. Give everything a good mix round. And as you can probably see, it's still quite a bit dry, so we need to add some Excite tuna oil. Give it all another good mix round. We've got a really oily bag mix, which is going to be letting off loads of food signals throughout the water. Put in a small amount of the mix. Shake that down to the bottom, get it nice and tight and compact. Next needs to go in the rig. Once the hook bait is at the bottom, put in some more of the mix. And keep topping it up till it's about half full. Once you've got it halfway, pop the lead in, continue to fill the bag up to the top. You need to compact it down. The tighter you get it, the more solid it's gonna be, the more aerodynamic it will be, so it'll be easier to cast and it'll sink down to the bottom a lot quicker. Simply twist the PVA bag and then lick around the top to seal it. Slide it over and push the bag out the other end, lick the corners and stick them down. And now your solid PVA bag is pretty much finished. And now for my top tip, what I'm gonna do is inject some more tuna oil into the solid PVA bag. Obviously I'm using a syringe, so please be very careful. Simply push the needle into the bag and fill it up with the tuna oil. It will give off loads more attraction, but it'll also make the PVA bag a lot denser and heavier, aiding casting. Before tying on the solid bag, I've actually done a couple of casts with just the bare lead. Once I got the desired distance, I put the line in the clip on the spool, which means now this is tied on, should hopefully land in the right spot. Once that's hit the bottom, take the line out the clip and let the line sink down through the water. The last thing you want is a tight line coming down to spook any of the fish that come through that channel. Set the clutch fairly tight. I don't want it so tight that it's gonna pull the rod in, but equally, I don't want it loose enough that if the fish takes a line, it can go down the channel behind the island. It can take some line, but it's not really, really tight. To let that line settle for about five or 10 minutes before I put the hanger on. So I want everything nice and sunk along the bottom of the lake.
12 months since the last DVD. It's been eventful. More and more people now asking me more questions directly about methods that we used on the DVD. Listening to the other guys, we get on really well and they've definitely helped my fishing without a doubt. Now I've got an array of different methods. A great team and very good anglers. There's a fantastic carp bait out there that completely gets overlooked by carp anglers. The old luncheon meat. It's been catching carp longer than I've been alive and it's done a lot for me fishing, especially on the margins. Because it's so soft, it doesn't lend itself to be cast sort of 80, 100 yards or so. But margin work is absolutely on the money. Entice Poloni is loaded to the hilt with stuff. Completely solid block of gooey, oily, perfect meat. You need the meat cutters. The meat's fit perfectly in the top of that. And you can see all the goodness come out. You've got about 200 hook baits there, all perfectly cubed, ready to go. That'll be ready for the actual hook bait on the hair itself and as the free beats. Add into that the entice meaty mix. It's got liver meals, liver powders, high stimulants. Uh, it's packed full of aminos. It really is the perfect match. Get all that meat covered, get it all coated. The meat itself is oily, so straight away the ground bait is actually sticking to the meat. Next one we do, Special G. Now this goes in everything I use, whether it be stick mixes, spod mixes. It's a product I've been using for a few years and it goes over with me. The next ingredient, nature's finest, water. Just from the lake, good mix round. It's starting to like stodge up a bit more now, which is what we want. The next ingredient is sweet corn. It's just to add a bit of a fleck of colour to grab their attention. Don't want much, it's probably just half a can. Give that a good mix up. That's sorted, that's the mix we're going to be putting out there. And just like Blue Peter, here's one we made earlier. So that's what we want to achieve on the lake bed. I want to get round the side now with the actual marker float, catapult some balls in. Again, eventually they'll break down and that's what we'll be left with. And if you look closely in there, there's the rig somewhere. And it just shows you how inconspicuous it can be. That's what we're actually using on the hair. So we've got a cube of luncheon meat, two bits of real corn, and that'll be cast out amongst this slot. Clump this up into actual balls of ground bait so it can go out in the catapult. A little bit smaller than a cricket ball. But eventually what I'm gonna do is probably put in about 12, 15 of these, and they actually will break down quite easily into what you see here on the plate. We're gonna get this out in the lake bed now. So I've actually walked down the bank now, and as you can see, you can just about see the marker float poking out there. It's about 20, 25 foot from the bank or so. What I don't want is any balls going to the left of the marker, because that's where the line's coming from. So anything from the marker to the right, I'm happy with. Gonna be working on an area sort of like the size of a one-man ground sheet. Catapult them evenly spaced out, so it gives the car room to come in, have a move around, eat, move off. With that way, you'll actually get not just one carp, you'll get a few feeding on the area because you've created that bigger area for them. Just going to attach a little stick. The actual stick mix as well is actually made of the entice meaty grain bait. Well, I've done, I've fused a few oils in there as well just to give it a few more added kicks. You'll notice the actual mix itself is very, very fine, so nothing can get caught up on the actual hook point. Attach a little bit of putty just in the middle of the rig, just to weigh it all down on the bottom. Give it a few spins, and there she is in the middle of the actual rig. So that's ready to go. The hook link itself is the new Camatex Soft from Fox. Again, it's very, very supple. It's a strippable braid, but it's going to hug that lake bed. You'll notice the are it very small. It's only enough just to cover the actual hook. I'm not into these sort of two, three inch big sticks. I just want just the hook covered to mask it on the bottom as well. Attach that via a silicone sleeve. So that'll just pop over the top there. Onto the quick link. Okay, slide that over. She's ready to go. And now it's about just marrying up exactly where the actual marker float was. Hit the clip, and down she goes. I finish exactly where I add the marker rod. Take the line out of the clip. What I'll do, because we're fishing the margins, plenty of slack line. So I am using heavy fluorocarbon, so it will sink out of the way as well. I'll pop it on the pod. Normally when I'm fishing at mega large, you know, range sort of 100 yards or so, the bobbins go on, so I've got a little bit of indication. Because we're fishing the margins, I'm going to allow that line to sink for about five minutes before I actually put the bobbin on. Everything's out of the way, pinned down, uh, and hopefully the lines won't scare the carp. They'll come in, feed on the patch, and we'll snare one. Had a bit more publicity, especially through the social network since the DVD came out. I've done a lot of fishing with my family, my friends, I've travelled abroad. I'm fortunate enough to catch a late record common out of the lake I travelled to last at 53.6. That's probably been a personal high so far this year. 
I see all the uh, Facebook updates you keep doing, the pictures on Twitter. Yeah. You're sending me images constantly every weekend. You're boring me, frankly. <laughs> but no, seriously, you've got this method going on at the moment, and obviously you seem yeah, to be mate. doing well on it. It's called the up and down method. All right. Uh, it's based around this krill and tuna method mix, mate. It's high in the ten essential amino acids that can't need. Start off with a kilo. If you need a bit more, then you've got a bit more to use. Stiffen the mix up if you overwet it. Just add a bit of water to it. Mix it all in there. It's starting to absorb the water straight away. Can you smell the scents coming yeah, off I it? Can. Oh mate, it's all you under your finger them. now. Your missus is going to hate you. <laughs> There's real fish in there, mate. mate That's okay. the pungent smell that you can smell coming off. It's dried fish. What I've found when I've been using it on commercials and day ticket waters where there's a lot of fish in there, it tends to single out the bigger fish. Look how quick and easy that is to make. They'll leave that for about 15 minutes right. to absorb the moisture. But in between that, set the rigs up. I'm taking notes, mate, because it's going the, straight into my bag. The rig is a simple method feeder. This is a submerged leader, it's leadless. But look how supple that is. Another safety aspect, which is key, obviously, you don't, if you do lose a fish, you don't want it tethered and dragging that, this lot around the lake yeah. bed. These actually pull off, so look how safe they are. And then it just sort of slits, sits in, so it's semi-fixed, basically. Yep. Very short hook link. I use these little quick clips so I can change them over as well. So you can just take your hook link off. I usually have a few different ones made up. Well, this is another little edge, mate. Ah, you sneaky little These super buoyant pop-ups, yep. I've been using these since they came out, mate. I've tested them at home. They stay up in a tank for about two days the fish are actually drawn into the bright colours. Obviously, when you're fishing the method feeder and there's a lot of fish in there, they're down on the bottom, they're stirring it up, aren't they? Boom, and that's what they're aiming for. They're drawn in by all that stimulant coming off the ground bait mix. You're using the half one. Is there a reason for that at all? Basically, it's just a micro swivel on a hook with a little hook bead to stop it coming off. Yeah. What that swivel does, it counterbalances the weight. So rather than it popping up and sitting up, three inches off the bottom like that. Yep. It'll just lie on the bottom and that'll just sit so it's balanced above the hook. So, you can't so no sit. putties needed, nothing. It's all sunk on the components that's, of the rig. That's the simplicity of it, boom, straight Let's in. have another look at that. Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> You've talked about the down method, so yeah. what's the up method then? That's my little edge, mate. You've got loads of edges, you have. Yeah. Use one of those crushers, put a few of the bigger pop-up sizes in. I use the 15 milli on the hook crush a few of these, you don't need to crush a lot. I guess the, the bigger bits are coming right up to the surface layers and the, the smaller bits are sort of hovering mid-water and stuff That's like exactly that. That's exactly what yeah. happens. There's another little bit that I've put in there, mate. Crushed him. You love this stuff, don't you, mate? I use it all the time. I think you got this from me. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to call me a northern monkey then, I was going to call you a northern <laughs> monkey, yeah. <laughs> bit of ground bait. Yep. Plug it into the feeder. My secret little crush pop-up mix. Sprinkle a bit of that in there. Squeeze that round. Once you've moulded all that method mix around that feeder... Probably, what, three, four ounces? That's it, you're packing a bit of weight there, so you need to make sure the line's right, the rod's right, so you can punch it out there and hit your spots. And watch this. Can you see how that little pop-up bait's just set up like a little yeah, mushroom? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. So it's just fizzing away, popping away. What's happening now? All the air's trying to get out. Can you see all the bits uh, starting yeah, to come yeah, up? Yeah. And that looks mint, that. Mint? <laughs> mint, mate. Is that a northern thing? It's a Manchester saying, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, when it's out in the water, you're going to squeeze it a bit harder, so it's going to be slower, the process, which is good, because you don't want it all coming out in one hit. Boom, yeah, yeah. it's up, it's gone. It's just all going on, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Can you see how that's made a nice bed of crumb in there as well? Yeah, yeah. And you know what it's like when a cart comes in? Look how that stirs up like that. Let's have a look at these zigs, mate. I want to see the edge. For years, mate, I've struggled to keep my zigs. Now, Fox have brought out these little zig disc holders. I might have to nick this zig disc as well. Part of when you're fishing a zig, you want to drop that lead, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you tend to use a heavier lead than you would normally because you've got so much line. When the carp takes the bait, you want a real heavy lead, so it's yeah, in straight it away. If you're fishing a nine foot zig, you don't want that lead hanging all the no, way down. No, because the there's lot. a lot of movement in the well yeah. before it can register a bite. So any single bleeps, by the way, you're hitting them on a zig. Just to show you how it works in the tank, I'll put a little lead on there, mate. Lead goes down, zig follows it, zig pops up. So what are the components? Well, you've got your camo lead to match the bottom. Then yeah, I've got the Fox great. Edges new tail rubber and, and lead clip. A sleeve on there to kick it away, because obviously when it lands, a lot of people with zig fishing, they have that trouble with casting. That little kicker on there is helping everything kick away from the lead, no yeah. tangles. I use them for all my fishing now. Then you get up to that little aligner, which acts like a little 
hook curve. Yep. So it's going to curve that a little hook, help it set in a little bit better. It's a more aggressive angle. It doesn't look like a normal liner out of the packet. You've sort of, you've camoed it up again. I also mark them with a little marker pen, so it looks like a little water nymph. Oh, Ooh, little edge, mate. Give all my edges away today. You've got to be careful, mate. <laughs> Obviously, you've got all your different depths made up. How often do you change when you zig fishing? What I usually do is I usually have two zigs set up at different depth. You've just got to keep searching the depth. Once you've caught a couple of fish at a set depth... You do put them all onto it, do you? I'll put them onto, both onto the same, yeah, because... Yeah, and then, if I don't get another hitter then, I'll change them again, one lower, one higher. You've got to keep chasing it. the fish. Yeah. If you keep getting them at the same depth, they get wise, you know, and then you go up another foot, bang, you'll get another one because it's not, not been seen. Obviously, different colours, you've got your white, yellow, orange. You just mix it up on the day, see what happens. Different days, you'll get different hits on different colours. If I get two or three fish on an orange pop-up, I'll switch the yellow one over to an orange, so I've got two orange out there and vice versa. On a couple of waters that I fish, you're not allowed to fish plastic, foam and stuff like that, but I like to use the new Fox Zigger liners where you actually put the foam through the loop, yeah. but you using the pop-up here, you can well, just you... use the normal, zig you know, normal liner and fish a pop-up and it sort of looks the same. Another thing about the pop-up as well, rather than using foam baits, besides the visual aspect, you've got the, the scent trail that yeah. you can home in on as well. Let's get the method feeder in there and watch the zigs and the method in conjunction with each other. Whoa, that's a big word for you. <laughs> yeah. oh, I know, mate. Simple. I'm like just a pretty boy. face. Is that your tractor I can hear in the background? <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Watch this in action, mate. You're going to love it. She's in. You'll see all the bits as that starts to break down. Oh, this is the yeah. bit I've been looking forward to. It's this starting to break down now. It's releasing all those fishy flavours. All those feed stimulants are coming up now at that ground bait. All the little bits are pop up. This is where you're getting the so up and down, This is when your zigs really come into play. Yeah. So yeah. instead of spotting over the top of them, You've Why? got it working from the bottom. You can spot a bit of extra ground bait, a bit of softer stuff over the top if you want to keep a cloud in the upper layers, but why do that when this is doing it for you? Such a simple way to fish, mate. And the break time, time on that stuff is real fast, so the fish can home in on it pretty quick. And you've got all these different colours coming up. These pop-ups will stay there all day, mate. They're super buoyant. But you'll see all the bits, as you break them down, moisture starts to get in. And you'll see some bits. Can you see these? Yeah, start sinking them back up. down again. I can see why you've been catching a lot of fish. I really can. Yeah, it's but something different. I mean, this is just only in a tank in what two foot of water. These bigger bits would come straight up to nine, ten foot of water, or even onto the surface, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, you like it. Nice work. Yeah. Can you take it all in? I don't think I can. <laughs> I'll have to have a tuition. <laughs> it's a challenge, carp fishing. I think that's why we all go. You know, it's you against nature. I film myself when I'm out and about. I'm always posting the pictures, writing articles for Bait Tech, giving people a bit of general feedback on, on what's happening on the carp scene. Get it. One on the Bait Tech pop ups. Beautiful fish. It's a shot of 20 pounds. Another stunning little common in day ticket water. Not a monster, as Lee Morris would say. I welcome all the same. Another one on the up and down method. Scaly old mirror. Battle hardened little fella around me. All around the lake. It's not just out one out of the margins. Uh, it's been hard on here today. I think there's only four fish come out. Fortunately, I've had three of them. So, not a bad day. It's not over yet. take anywhere rig the boa rig as you can see it's sprung loaded there it stops the fish from using the lead to throw the hook out of their mouth the hook is going in their mouth and then they're flinging their heads using the weight of the lead to rip the hook out of their mouth and getting away with it nine times out of ten we've ran down to a screaming take struck nothing's there that's because they're using the lead to get rid of the hook so this stops that that's just a silicon tubing and inside We've got a 25 pound hydro link and just to set that up you go over one end of one swivel and then just literally gather the hydro link up and pull back over the top of that swivel and now that's set it's fished 360 style basically a size 8 mugger there it's just fed straight for a size 12 swivel i've then got a hook ring swivel which i'm going to attach my bait to and then that's stopped off with two hook stops Nine times out of ten, I fish it with a tiger nut. Great thing about these bait tip ones is you get loads of different sizes in the tins. So that one looks about perfect. 
I'm using an 8 mil drill for this, but I'm going to basically bore out the tiger nut about halfway there. Take my 8 mil cork stick and I'll measure it up and then have a little bit so it's stuck out at the end. So I'm going to roughly cut off around that mount there. And if you put it up next to the actual tiger, there'll be a fair bit of it stuck out of the tiger. So that's roughly about perfect. So I'm going to pull that away and then I'm going to place the needle through the end of the tiger nut, straight through the center of that hole there. I'm then going to go straight through the center of the cork stick and then just screw that straight onto the tiger nut. I'm going to take some bait floss now and feed the bait floss through the micro ring swivel. And then I'm going to take both parts of the dental floss and feed both bits through the actual tiger nut and out the other end. And then pull both ends up through. Pull that swivel, the ring swivel, just so you can still see the ring. So you can still see that the bait is spinning there. You don't want to go right over the top so the bait's not spinning anymore. I'm going to tie just a simple overhand knot, get my bait stop, place it in the centre, pull the knot down on top, do a series of them, one, two, three, trim them off, so you've got a little bit still stuck up the end, blob that off with a lighter. So now that should sit like so. Perfect, ready for any carp to be had. A rig that will go anywhere, cast anywhere, is the Humble Choddy. Now, it was devised back in the mid 90s by Frank Warwick, and over the years, it's had its own sort of take on things. People have added little bits to it, little tweaks including myself as well. It doesn't have to be boilies. You, most people say they're using the choddy, they're on, they're on a pop-up. Sometimes if you start thinking outside the box, you can actually play around with maize or adding little bits and pieces to it. So if you look at that, a 15 mil choddy, I've fused hemp on there. And again, maybe not just hemp, but you could actually disguise them as actual water snails as well. My favourite has to be the Medusa chod. Six, seven maggots fused onto the top via bait floss. For the winter, an absolute proven winner for me. The actual sinking of the chod is really important. If you've got like a really dense weed bed, say sort of two foot or so, the slower it sinks, the more it's going to sit on top of the actual weed bed. Obviously, the heavier the chod, it's going to plumb through the actual weed bed. And literally, this is as slow as I want. It's that slow. The big show that's been popped up everywhere is zig bugs and just fused them on the top of the chod. Chod bugs now, I suppose you could call them. Naturel, in that one goes. And again, it's all about that slow sink, especially on the naked chod setup. That's the other little bug on the 10 miller high-vis pop-up. For me, it's just all about offering the carp something a little bit different, something they haven't seen before can definitely help you snag that extra bite or two. We've been given a new Poloni boilie from Bait Tech. Same as the actual, the meat and the tins, they've devised that into a boilie. So I'll show you what I've actually made out in the lake bed. And that's the platter that's available to them. The grade A hemp, the biggest hemp seed we can get our hands on. And obviously the new boilie, so we're going to see how that performs. The choddy that's going to be doing the business for me. Married up the actual hook bait with a 15 mil and I've actually flossed on hemp. That's going to sit pretty, hopefully snare us one. It's nice to keep your own sort of video diary. More or less everywhere I go now, I'll, I'll be setting the camera up and filming what I can. The methods we talked about, we'll be visiting other lakes now, deploying those methods. If you a camera in the swim, you can catch anything. It's always best hitting that record button. Happy days. Look at that, absolute stunner. Fought like a demon. Taking on the old bait text rod mix again. Oh, get in there, son. Just over 29. Come on. Bait tech on the march. 21 pound on the button. Taking on those very slow sinking shots again. Just down the margin. Absolutely beautiful. Taking over a bit of a spod mix as well. What a truly cracking carp this one is. Thank you. Mwah. Come on. £37, pounds, 8 ounces of Essex Chunk. Fantastic winter car, over the moon to say the least. Taking on those Poloni boilies, absolutely buzzing. <laughs> Mwah. 
get on the Poloni. Winter carpet. Yes! Look at that absolute stunner. Caught on the new Big Tech boilies. The Poloni are on it. True to form, middle rod and the left hand rod, common and a mirror. Get in there! 20 pounds and about two ounces of dark, beautiful Shropshire common. It's gonna behave, which it's not gonna behave. It's a lively one. Look at that! Stunner! Absolutely chuffed to bits. Proper bar of gold. This one was taken on the very slow sinking uh, chods we talked about. Offering something a little bit different was the downfall of this one. There you go. 22 pound, 10 ounces on the Poloni boilie. It's really making it a mark for itself this bait. And the results have been brilliant between myself and the other boys. Where we've been catching a few on them. I really do not want to leave. Instead of writing articles all the time for the Bait Tech website and stuff like that, I bought myself a decent camera and thought what I'll do is a video diary. And not only that, is take my son with me and I can capture moments that probably would get forgotten about. The watching him grow up on them has just been magical and some of the moments that I've captured are there forever. Just to show you a little top tip, I've got my little assistant here, Lewin, yeah. yeah? And what we're gonna do is mesh up baits. Now, the reasons why I do this is because out in the lake, you've got a lot of ducks out there, there's a lot of small fish out there, and they're always pecking away at the bait. Meshing up a bait, you're sort of putting an armored coat in around it. I'm gonna show you how to do this with pop-ups. You can even do it with bottom baits. Pick out a bait, yeah? Right, now these are cork ball pop-ups. Inside the actual bait there, you can see that there's a cork ball set in there. Now the reasons why I always, always mesh these baits up is because if you pierce this bait, the water actually gets inside it. So if you put a baiting needle through it, like so using it on say a choddy, it's got a little micro ring swivel there. So you have to pierce the bait and then pull it through with floss. Now water will get inside the actual bait there and around the cork ball and then it will fall away if it's not got an armoured mesh around it. We're going to use some tights to do this. Some are mummy's tights. Are they mummy's ones? No. No? Whose are they? Daddy's. <laughs> Daddy's tights. Right, pick out another bait, little man. Basically, we're going to place them inside the tights. Obviously, I've used these tights quite a bit. So place that in there. Right, right. if you hold that for me, you got that? Get some bait floss, just cut this off, cross it over like so, and then I'm going to do another loop right next to that one there. So another loop there, bring that one down, and then just feed the tag through both of the loops like so. That now creates a slip knot. If you want to hold that, little man, you got that? pull the actual bait really, really tight. So you can barely see the actual tights around the bait. Put that slip knot over the top. That's it, feed that over there, mate. Well done. Right, you grab one tag end and pull that really tight. Right, and now we're just gonna do a series of granny knots. So I'm gonna do one, two, there we go. That's enough knot. Do you think that's enough? Yeah. Yeah, just cut maybe about a centimetre left on the tag ends, each end there. Now, I'm just gonna blob each end, push it down by the knot, blob the other end, cut the bottom part of the tights away. So if you wanna hold that bait there, little man. Why is there smoke on there? Because I had to blob it. And I'm just gonna trim a little bit of this away. I'm gonna blob the end of the bait as well, just to seal it. Now that, cork ball bait will last you well in excess of 48 hours easily out in the lake. Now the other beauty of doing this is when you actually dip the bait, the tights around the bait as such will take on all of that liquid so it'll gently ooze it out into the lake. I do that with all, all of my pop-ups and I now do it with all of my bottom baits and the beauty of doing it with your bottom baits is you can then 
crunch the actual bottom bait so you could break the actual seal of the bait as such which will let it ooze out all of them little tiny particles through the mesh and it will last a lot longer. So hopefully that tip will help you out. And get on the mesh. It's just everything about carp fishing for me. It's the drive there, it's making rigs at home, it's the preparation, using different concoctions of baits. It's an addiction. Look at that glorious creature. 39 pound, 10 ounces of pure bait techie in machine. <laughs> What well, wild about that for a lovely scaly one. Only about 17 pound, but what a stunning fish this is. Caught this one using them bait head boilies. This will definitely be a proper nice fish when he's 30 pound. Oh, easy girl. Well, I've got something really, really special for you here. An absolute beast of a mirror carp. Proper scaly one, proper old English one. Have a look at that. For a stunning mirror cup. 37 pound on the new bait tech bait. Thank you very much. Using a little tiny mesh bag, I managed to bank this beauty. I managed to bag this at 26 pound, eight ounces. <laughs> the bar has been raised, Mr. Morris. <laughs> Come on! Well, how about that? £39 of Essex Syndicate Mirror Carp. Absolutely gorgeous. Caught this one using the new Bait Tech Boily. Crumbed about two, three kilos up, mixed it with a load of hemp, and managed to bank this. I'm going to tell you what it What a fish. Happy days. A lovely linear at 33 pounds. Look at that thing. What a glorious, gorgeous looking monster. Yet another whacker caught on them bait head boilies. Spotted probably four or five kilo out there for this one. 37 pounds on the button. Beautiful bait tech eating machine. <laughs> Okay, so that's it from the guys at Bait Tech. Thanks for watching, really hope you enjoyed it all. I'm sure our guys' advice and tips will help you bank more carp. If you've got any other questions, please get in contact via the website or you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm ready to get the rod back in. Thanks for watching and I'll leave you with some outtakes. nearly had you. Right, one of the most, oh my God, I can't believe it's happening. It's just like another Dean Watson all over again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that causes, you know, a real good... I'm going to show you how to make... What did I call them? <laughs> it ain't doing it! It ain't doing it! And then just slip it over. <laughs> We've got a guest angler on the bank. His name's Mr. Oh. <laughs> Hello, mate. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, how you doing? You all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, good, good. Start again. <laughs> bait on afterwards. I haven't, because the bait's just come off. <laughs> so, tell me, what are you doing with this method mix? I nicked it. <laughs> <laughs> then put your baits on. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> <right in> there. <laughs> Wicked Wild West. Firstly, you want to use a short braided. Ah. Oh. I'd like to admit to that. It adds to the actual. Mm. Mm. Obviously, because it's called the up and down method, I've got a wasp in my face. Well, that's us from, that's it. <laughs> Straight first line. All right. Mm. Really hope you enjoyed watching. Oh, the hair is gone, absolutely gone.
Okay, so that's it from the camp at Baytech. Camp at Baytech? So that's it from everyone here today in this world. Uh.